Good morning, everybody. Welcome to this module of Modern English Structure, Introduction to English Speech Sounds, paper number 9 of semester 5 of BA 3rd year. Today in this video, we are going to talk about the description and classification of English consonants. Consonants, phonetically speaking, are those sounds in the production of words somewhere in the oral cavity some obstruction should take place. They cannot be pronounced for any length of time just like the vowels. And linguistically speaking, consonants occupy the marginal positions in the examples. For describing and classifying the consonants, the following questions would help us. The very first question is, is the airstream mechanism for the sounds provided by the lungs or some other organs? The second is, is the air forced out or drawn in while the sound is pronounced? The third question is, do the vocal cords vibrate or not? And the fourth question is, is the soft palate raised or lowered? The fifth question that helps us is, at what point does the articulation take place for the pronunciation of the sound? And the sixth question is, what is the manner of articulation in which the air coming out goes out. Now of these uh, six questions, uh, the first question and the second question are automatically answered because the first question uh, asks, is the airstream mechanism for the sounds provided by the lungs or some other organs? For all the English speech sounds, yes, the airstream mechanism is provided by the lungs. So it is pulmonic. We need not talk about velaric or glottalic airstream mechanism. It is always from the lungs and so it is pulmonic airstream mechanism that is used. The second question is, is the air forced out or drawn in? For the pronunciation of all English sounds, the air coming out from the lungs provides us the energy to speak. So it is not ingressive, ingressive is taking in of the air, but is aggressive, aggressive is giving out of the air. So, combinedly we can say that it is pulmonic aggressive airstream mechanism that is used for the pronunciation of English speech sounds. So, these two questions will become redundant. We need not answer every time the speech sound is described. Similarly is the question number four. Is the soft palate raised or lowered? Now, this need not be answered every time because it has already been discussed uh, that English speech sounds are all oral excepting three sounds. M, N and N. M, N and N. There are only three nasal sounds. All the rest of the sounds are oral. So, <coughs> question number one, question number two and question number four can be conveniently dropped down. Thereby, we are left with only three questions, which will become the three-term label for describing a consonantal sound in English. Number one, voiced or voiceless. Depending upon the answer for the third question, do the vocal cords vibrate or not? Accordingly, we have voiced or voiceless. At what point does the articulation take place? Accordingly, we have the place of articulation. And the sixth question, what is the manner of articulation or the structure maintained in the oral cavity? Accordingly, we have the manner of articulation. Now, these three aspects are useful for us to describe the three-term label of a consonantal sound. Before going into the discussion of this, the <clears throat> organs of speech and a revision of organs of speech is a must. The organs of speech present in the oral cavity constitute the articulatory system because the articulation of these organs results in the production of speech sounds correctly. The oral cavity can be conveniently divided into the organs present in the upper jaw and the organs present in the lower jaw. As the upper jaw is fixed, these organs are called as passive articulators, while the lower jaw is movable and so these organs are called as active articulators. The active articulators move and make a contact or come very close to the passive articulators for the production of various speech sounds. Accordingly, in the passive articulators, we have the upper lip, the upper teeth, teeth ridge, the hard palate and the soft palate. The exceptions in the organs of the upper jaw, 
that can be moved are the upper lip that can move to a little extent and also the soft palate which can move. But still, all these organs belonging to the upper jaw are considered as passive articulators because the upper jaw as such doesn't move. While the organs that are belonging to the lower jaw like the lower lip, the lower teeth and the dance master, the tongue with all its parts, the tip, the rims of the tongue, the front part of the tongue, the blade of the tongue, the central part of the tongue and the back part of the tongue are called as active articulators. Normally, the active articulator uh, active articulators articulate with the low passive articulators in order to produce the speech sounds. Apart from this, what is more important is the <clears throat> vocal cords as well which will determine whether the sound is voiced or voiceless now the organs of the vocal cords become the phonetary system that we discussed under the speech mechanism and organs of speech if you just recollect the lungs are filled with the fine capillaries inside which are called as bronchioles which unite to form the bronchus from each lung together called as bronchi the two bronchi unite to form the windpipe or the thorax that you could see in this diagram, which is protected by the semicircular bones that can be felt by fingers when moved over the throat. The top of the thorax is larynx that you could see in the diagram. And this larynx is a box-like structure with a pair of vocal cords which are two-fold ligament and elastic issue. The vocal cords also are shown in the diagram near the throat. The vocal cords are attached in the anterior and free in the posterior so that their movement causes an opening which is what is called as glottis. And this glottis is used for the passage of air file for breathing. The glottis is closed by a lip-like structure on top which is called as epiglottis. The epiglottis also is shown in the diagram. The epiglottis closes the glottis so that the food particles and the water droplets would not enter into the respiratory system and thereby it is protected. And when we look into this first uh, question of whether the uh, vocal cords vibrate or not accordingly producing the voiced or voiceless sounds. As discussed earlier, we can have a number of positions assumed by the vocal cords because they are free at the back and attached in the front. Of the various positions that the glottis can assume, the following four positions that you could see in the picture are important. Number one in the picture is completely open glottis. Whereupon the two vocal cords, which are little whiter, are wide apart. Thereby, the gap that is present between these vocal cords, which is called as glottis, is quite wide. This is what is the position that we observe when we are not talking, not eating and merely breathing. So that the air can pass through the vocal cords, through the glottis rather, very freely without having any friction. All right. Now, the second position that can be possible is, as you could see in the lower diagram, the vocal cords, the glottis is in vibration and the vocal cords are very closer to each other so that the voiced sounds are produced. As the air has to pass through the narrower glottis because the vocal cords are a little closer to each other, obviously they have to put the vocal cords into vibration when the air is passing through thereby producing the voiced sounds the third that you could see in the third diagram is narrowed glottis whereupon you could see the vocal cords are very very close to each other thereby leaving a very small gap in the form of glottis this is what exactly we observed when we whisper and try to talk in a very softer way and the fourth position that can be plausible is glottis is completely closed. The two vocal cords come very close to each other, thereby closing the glottis. This is the position when we are eating, drinking or we are producing the glottalic sounds. So these four positions are to be borne in mind. Of these four, the first and I mean the, the diagram that you could see in the middle whereupon the vocal cords are wide apart and the vocal cords are closer. These two are very important when you are producing the speech. 
because the first diagram shows that you are not talking and you are just breathing and the last diagram shows the fourth diagram shows that it is completely closed and this is the position when you are eating or drinking what is more important when the speech sounds are produced is the middle diagram which i have given in the pair where the vocal cords are slightly separated so that the air can pass through the glottis very freely thereby producing the voiceless sounds and in the second you could find that the glottis is much narrower because the vocal cords are coming closer to each other thereby leaving a very small gap in the form of glottis and thereby forming the voiced sounds because the air has to pass through the vocal cords and the glottis by putting the vocal cords into vibration thereby the very first criteria of describing a consonant is whether the sound is voiced or voiceless by voiced we mean that the vocal cords vibrate and by voiceless we mean that the vocal cords do not vibrate the second that could be possible is the articulatory system and the articulatory system is Uh, the place of articulation the second of the three terms of a consonant sound depends upon the place of articulation the organs situated in the lower jaw move from their position to articulate with the organs that are situated in the upper jaw the organs that move from the original place to articulate are called as active articulators while that which do not move are called as passive articulators the place of articulation is named after the passive Uh, articulator this is done because all the sounds excepting bilabials articulated with the help of two lips and the labiodentals articulated with the help of lower teeth and upper teeth are articulated with the tongue which is the active articulator accordingly we have different types of places of articulation let's look into each number 1 is called as bilabial as the name suggests labial is lips and bilabial is both the lips are involved in the production of the sound some sounds are produced by two lips and they are called as bilabial sounds they are either voiced or voiceless their examples are the initial sounds as you could find in pat bat mat was accordingly the representative symbols will be p b m and u p b m and o respectively the second place of articulation that could be possible is labiodental the sounds that are articulated by the lower lip and the upper teeth labio is lips dental is teeth the lower lip and the upper teeth are called as labiodental sounds as you could find in f, f, fan v, v, van in the production of f and v you could find that the sounds are labiodental the third is called as the dental sounds sounds articulated by the tip of the tongue against the teeth are called as the dental sounds the examples would include as in thing as in this th and z are the dental sounds in english alveolar is the next place of articulation sounds that are articulated by the blade of the tongue against the teeth ridge or the alveolar ridge is called as the alveolar sounds the examples would include t d sh s z l m mm. these are called as the alveolar sounds where the tip of the tongue goes and articulates with the teeth ridge or the alveolar ridge the next sound that you could have is post alveolar the sounds articulated by the tip of the tongue against the back of the teeth ridge is called as the post alveolar sounds as you could find in the example of r as in rain rest remember red r r r is the post alveolar sound in english then we have the palato alveolar sound sounds that are articulated by the tip of the tongue against the teeth ridge with the front of the tongue raised towards the hard palate are called as the palato alveolar sounds the palate also is involved in the alveolar ridge or the teeth ridge also is involved in the production of the sounds as you could find in the examples of ch j sh j where the teeth ridge as well as the hard palate are involved in the production of sounds and such sounds are called as palato alveolar sounds the next set of sound is what is called as the palatal sound the palatal sound 
in the production of which only the hard palate is involved, as you could find in the example of y, y, as in yet, yes. The next is the velar sounds. Sounds that are articulated by the back of the tongue against the soft palate are called as the velar sounds. As you could find in the examples of k, k, g, g, or m. So k as in kite, g as in go, m as in the last sound of sing. You could find that these sounds are articulated with the back of the tongue and the soft palate. Hence, they are called as the velar sounds. The last place of articulation related is the glottal sound. Sounds that are produced by the obstruction or narrowing between the vocal cords and the air passing through the glottis is called as the glottal sound. Uh, as you could find in the English sound, <sighs> as in hat, hen, house, home, etc. So, the place of articulation gives the names of bilabial with the two lips, labiodental with the lips and the teeth, dental with the teeth, alveolar with the teeth ridge or the alveolar ridge, post alveolar with the posterior portion of the alveolar ridge, palatal with the heart palate, palato alveolar with the alveolar ridge and the heart palate, velar with the soft palate, and glottal with the glottis. The third type of description that is applicable to the consonantal sounds is the manner of articulation. The manner of articulation refers to the way the air escapes through the closure and the kind of closure or narrowing that is involved in the production of the speech sounds. The third term of a consonant sound is given after the manner of articulation of that sound. The various ways in which English sounds are produced can be studied under the following categories like plosives. The active articulator makes a complete contact with the passive articulator to form a complete closure. The soft palate is raised to block the nasal passage. First, a complete closure is observed in the passage of air at some point in the vocal tract. As a result of it, the air pressure is built up behind the closure. The closure is then suddenly released or removed. This causes a sudden release of the blocked air with explosive sound and hence they are called as plosives. So the air is compressed in the oral cavity and then released with a sudden explosion as you could find in the production of p, b, t, d, k, m, etc. The next is affricates. The active articulator makes a contact with the passive articulator to form a complete closure. The soft palate is raised to block the nasal passage of air. As a result of it, the air pressure is built up behind the closure. The closure is then slowly removed to release the air gradually. It's not a sudden release as you could find in plosives, but it is a slow release. Because of a slow separation of the articulators, affricates are characterized by slight audible friction, not by an explosive noise, but by a slow fricative sound. The examples for this will be ch and j, ch and j. A slow release with a slight friction is observed in affricates. The next is what is called as fricatives. The fricatives are those where in the active articulators come very, very close to the passive articulator to form a very narrow gap. There is no closure at any point in the vocal tract as we find in plosives or affricates. The soft palate is raised to block the nasal passage of air. When the sounds, the air passes through the narrow gap between the articulators, it causes audible friction and hence they are called as fricatives. Fricatives are continuously accompanied by the audible friction. The examples could be where you could observe a slight audible friction in the pronunciation of all these sounds. There are nine fricatives in English. The next manner of articulation is nasals. Nasal, the active articulator, makes a contact with the passive articulator to form a complete closure of the oral passage as in plosives and affricates. 
but the nasal passage remains open due to the lowering of the soft palate or velum so that the air coming from the lungs can pass through the nose and not through the mouth. Because the air is passing through the nose, they are called as nasals, as we find in the sounds of mmm, mmm, mmm. The air is passing through the nose. English has got three nasal sounds. Post alveolar frictionless continuant is the next type of manner that could be possible. The active articulator comes very close to the passive articulator to form a narrow or a lesser degree. That is, the articulation do not come so close to each other, unlike in the case of fricatives. There is no closure at any point in the vocal tract. The soft palate is raised to block the nasal passage. Hence, the air is released without audible friction, such as the sound of r, 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 as in red, road, rail, rest, and so on. English has got one frictionless continuant. The next manner of articulation that could be possible is lateral. The active articulator comes in contact with the passive articulator to form a partial closure. The soft palate is raised to block the nasal passage. The air stream can escape from the sides or the rims of the tongue. So the rims of the tongue are lowered by maintaining a contact with the passive articulator and the air coming from the lungs will not pass through the middle but through the lateral or the sides and hence the sound is called as lateral. English has got one lateral sound as you could see in mm, mm, as in little the initial as well as word final mm. Then last set of manner of articulation is semivowels. Semi-vowels are essentially short approximants. They are rapid glides from a vowel towards another vowel of greater steady duration. They differ from both the approximants and the vowels in that they are momentary in nature and cannot be prolonged. The examples that you could see are y and w, y as in yes, yet, yo yo, w as in watch, wait, waste, and so on. Thus, we have understood the place of articulation and the manner of articulation with all details. Now, let us look at the English consonants as are distributed according to the place of articulation first and then the manner of articulation. According to the place of articulation, the first is bilabial. We have four number of English sounds belonging to the bilabial which are produced using the two lips. P, B, M, W. Labiodental, we have two labiodental sounds in English, f and v. Two dental sounds in English, f and v. Six alveolar sounds in English, t, d, l, n, s, z. One post alveolar sound in English, r. One palatal sound in English, y. One post alveolar sound, uh, palato alveolar sounds are four in number in English, ch. J, sh, j. Three velar sounds in English. K, g, n. And one glottal sound in English. H. Thus making the English consonants to be 24 in number according to the place of articulation. Let us look at the distribution and the classification of English consonants according to the manner of articulation. There are six plosives in English. P, b, t, d, k, g. Two affricates in English, ch and j. Nine fricatives in English, f, v, th, v, s, z, sh, j, and h. Three nasal sounds in English, m, n, and ng. One lateral sound in English, l. One frictionless continuant, r. And two semivowels in English, y and v thereby making the total number 24 for according to the manner of articulation. So, in this video, we have learnt as to how to classify and describe a consonantal sound. We especially concentrated on English phonology and have given a sort of description in terms of three terms, the place of articulation, the manner of articulation and whether the sound is voiced or voiceless for almost the English consonantal sounds which are 24 in number. Hope you have understood this video. Watch this video again and again for a clarification. Post your doubts 
or queries in the Google Classroom or in the WhatsApp group. Enjoy learning phonology of English with us. Bye for now and stay tuned for the next videos.